I'm, I, I'm the executive director of the Northwest Cooperative Development Center. We are a 501c3 organization located in Olympia, Washington, and our mission in life is to foster community economic development through the cooperative business model. Um, we are a team of five co-op developers um, located in Olympia. Um, four of us are here today. One of us is um, in Kansas doing some uh, other education. And um, if Eric, Teresa, and Meredith could raise your hands. Um, they're, they're cooperative developers extraordinaire. And we all bring um, a different skill set to the cooperative development and together as a team, um, we are a huge resource, I think, to our region. Um, and our region includes Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Hawaii. I'll, and at one point we had Alaska as well. We've seeded Alaska uh, a few years ago when they got their own center and, um, and we uh, continue to work with Hawaii, but they are becoming stronger every day when, since their center um, became established a couple of years ago. Um, in the Pacific Northwest, there are hundreds of cooperatives. And um, we work with um, approximately, I don't know, 25 projects approximately at any one time um, in this region. And um, through our work, we um, have noticed that there's not a lot of dialogue happening between the co-op sectors. And um, the se some of the sectors that we um, find ourselves working in include um, ag and natural resources, housing, home care, we work with consumers, we work with producers, we work with workers, and we work with um, everything in between that, too. Uh, so along with our, um, some other peers in the Pacific Northwest, we believe that the time is right to have these conversations about how we can begin to um, have dialogues across sectors. Now, there is one exception, I think. Well, maybe there are more exceptions than one, but one in particular that seems to stand out, and that's in our local food systems. Um, and um, those of you involved with food co-ops who are fostering re relationships with your um, local producers are, um, exemplify that. Um, and we want to see that um, occur in greater numbers and, um, and across uh, other sector lines. So um, that was part of the impetus of the conference coming together um, these last two days. Uh, we're using local food systems as the framework um, but we really uh, have an ulterior motive in mind that it crosses all co-op sectors and that we um, begin to uh, have these dialogues that support uh, our mutually um, important missions. In uh, 2010 and 2011, those of you who were at the uh, reception last night heard a little bit about this. We got together with our friends from SLICE, the Strengthening Local Independent Co-ops Everywhere, had discussions about what our local cooperative economies look like here in the Northwest and determined that we really needed to know more about what our uh, um, community looked like. So we put together a survey instrument and uh, finished up that survey, put out a report that was published uh, in the spring of this year. The report's available on our website at www.nwcdc.coop. There are some posters available that have this map on them. Uh, that are available out in the hallway. The map represents the number of people that responded to the survey. And, oh, before I get there, this, the committee that put together the survey consisted of about 15 people, all with different agendas and what they wanted to have included in that survey. We know that everyone is really busy, and so we felt like we had somewhat of a one-time opportunity to get in front of people to really test what, what was happening within our region. Uh, so we tried to include a lot of information and a lot of uh, data gathering within that. We ended up with uh, 49 questions, a bit of logic built into it. Our target audience uh, at the time was three different groups of people. It was member owners of co-ops. It was technical <coughs> assister, assistant providers like NWCDC, the Ag Business Center, and uh, the Alaska Biz uh, Cooperative Development Center, the Montana Center, et cetera, and the independent consultants that are here as well. Um, and then we had a third category that we identified as professional providers, i.e. attorneys, CPAs, and other folks that um, bring necessary skills to development. 
we had 105 independent or unique answers, which we felt was really good throughout the Cascade region, which we defined for our purposes as Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Uh, since then, we've actually had uh, requests from other parts of the country to duplicate this um, survey. So it's important not only for us, but it appears for the nation as well. Um, and uh, so we're on the right track for gathering this information. Uh, there were three overarching goals that we had for the uh, survey. And these three goals were to assess the strength of the co-op movement, to um, find out what the appetite might be within our region to self-fund a cooperative development fund. And the third thing was to better understand who our cooperatives are in the region and whether or not they were interested in participating in a directory. To look at the strength of the co-op movement, uh, many of our questions um, were based on the cooperative principles. I used to think of as, as, uh, the P word as Pepsi, um, a bad word, and uh, now it's the P word is a good word because it's a principle. It's P6, P7, P1, whatever. <laughs> it's great. And, uh, and then also the values. Um, so we uh, had a particular emphasis as well on social justice and environmental sustainability. I'm pleased to say that across the region, regardless of whether you were urban or rural or on the east side of the mountains or the west side of the mountains, over 70% identified that they subscribe to the cooperative principles, not just a few of them, but all of them. And um, in the survey, we asked that people share how they su subscribe to the principles. And um, we've included that in uh, the survey report, which again is available on our website. Uh, I don't have time to go into them now, but there's some really creative ideas that I hope others can glean and uh, take back to your own communities. 19 people said that they were interested in participating in a focus group to um, determine what a self-funded cooperative development fund in the Northwest might look like. I've had that on my radar now for over a year to uh, gather together those folks, and it's still there, and uh, I welcome anybody else to uh, come join me in that effort uh, to pull together these people because it's, an, it's important uh, reliance on grants and government funding is tough, to say the least, and it would be really great to know that if we had dedicated funds, funds from our community to help those efforts. Um, and if not funds, at least um, shared resources. And, um, and then lastly, the uh, forming a directory. Interestingly, there wasn't uh, as great a participation rate as I thought there would be. I mean, that, to me, that seemed like a no-brainer. Yeah, let people know where we are and where, what we're doing. Um, but uh, since we put out that survey, the uh, National Cooperative Business Association has mined the data from the University of Wisconsin um, uh, survey of cooperatives around the nation to find uh, out where they're at and they've put it into an app that's really cool and available on their website which is www.ncba.coop. So um, we have access to information that wasn't available just a year ago and, um, and we continue to have conversations with a, another uh, emerging co-op um, that will be nationwide based, and that's uh, Data Commons. And is there uh, additional opportunity to participate with them to get our data out there and make it available to other co-ops to use? So that kind of covers our survey piece. Um, my hope is that your conversations and, and sharing of stories today helps foster this um, cross-sector dialogue and, um, and how in oh so many ways we touch each other's lives in our communities. Um, both small and large. And then one final thought I have that I'd like to um, uh, challenge you to think about as well is that although we have lots of co-ops in the region doing really, really good things, there are so many people that don't know what a co-op is today. And I have a really sad story. It actually brings tears to my eyes <laughs> now that um, I'm engaged in co-ops so much. <laughs> this is really silly, particularly when you hear it. Um, I grew up, I, I got to fill out, you know, the bingo thing? I grew up in a co-op family. I'm third generation. But I didn't know that until I was 40 years old. I think this happens when you turn 50. <laughs> <laughs>
anyway, it's a shame, and I don't want it to happen to anybody else. And so we have to um, begin to educate better our communities about the power of the cooperative business model um, and how it can really transform people's lives, make a difference in our communities. And, um, and it has to start with our youth. We have got to change the conversation from the beginning. Um, it's too hard. Co-ops are really hard to do, and they shouldn't be. But it's because people don't know how to work together. And, um, and, they, and so you're starting from ground one at 40, and, and that's wrong. We, uh, we really need to change that dynamic and that paradigm, and um, that's what I challenge you to do. So thank you.